A very happy day to all of you and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to discuss about corporate actions. What is the role of the fund administrator with respect to corporate actions with reference to the investment portfolio of the fund? I have tagged this video as the first video of the series of corporate actions. And because this is the introductory video, we'll be taking a look at the overview of corporate actions. And the next three videos will take a look at the specifics of different aspects of fund administration with respect to corporate actions. If you're interested in a career in global markets, especially with reference to equities, currencies, or even interest rate products, with respect to operations, regulations, and settlements, in the four dimensions of fund accounting, OTC derivatives, trade derivatives, trade life cycle, and custody operations, then do subscribe to my channel because I upload videos on these four dimensions on different aspects at regular intervals. I'm your learning partner, Sushila Hariharan, and I've been training corporates in the field of fund accounting, OTC derivatives, and trade life cycle for the last 14 years. Let's take a look at what is a corporate action. A corporate action is defined as an event announced by a corporate, which is approved by the shareholders. So there are two specific aspects of corporate actions. The first one is, it's an announcement made by the corporate, but it cannot be made without the approval of the shareholders. The shareholders have to approve the event, okay? So it's not a unilateral uh, announcement that is made by the corporate. It, after the approval has uh, been received by the shareholders, there is something called as a voting that takes place with respect to the corporate action. And corporate actions materially change the structure of the securities held by the investment manager. So why is this important in the field of fund accounting or fund, fund administration? This is because you know, all mutual funds, hedge funds, etc., hold trillions of dollars worth of assets, both in the form of equities, sometimes in the form of fixed income, other times in the form of preference shares, etc. So there could be corporate actions announced by the investment that they have uh, made in, and these corporate actions will affect the net asset value of the fund. It will affect the behavior of the portfolio and therefore we need to have a comprehensive understanding of the different types of corporate actions that are announced by the corporate and what is the role of the fund administrator with respect to the announcement made by the corporate. From a corporate's perspective there are four capital types. The first one is equity. Under equity we will include common stock, differential voting rights, DVRs as well as ADRs, that is the American Depository Receipts. The second type of uh, capital is bonds, which are issued by corporates for different maturities. The third type is called as, third and fourth are actually called as hybrids. Okay, one is preference shares. Preference shares are a kind of hybrid instrument because they have dividends that are announced, but at a fixed rate and though they are paid post tax. And the fourth type, which is very popular, especially amongst unlisted companies, and that is called as convertible securities. Convertible securities are securities that are bonds, and after a maturity date on redemption, they get converted into equity. So these are the broad four categories of capital that companies issue, and there could be corporate actions affecting each of this. Look, hedge fund managers hold assets in different types and from a corporate perspective if you look at a company like uh, General Motors their capital com comprises all the four and there could be a hedge fund which is owning stock in General Motors and each of this could be affected because of the announcement made by the corporate. So to recap the four capital types issued by the company are equity which includes common stock, ADR, GDR etc. Then there are bonds, which are of different maturities. Again, bonds have so many variations. You have uh, fixed rate bonds, floating rate bonds, you have medium term bonds, you have long term bonds, you have foreign currency convertible bonds, you have foreign currency bonds, you have euro bonds, etc. The third category is called as preference shares, which behaves like a combination of both bond as well as equity. And convertible securities, which are issued by companies as debt instruments, but on redemption, instead of being paid, repaid back, the investor gets common stock in the new company according to the swap ratio. So we'll be having separate uh, videos uploaded for corporate actions for equity, corporate actions of bonds, corporate actions of preference shares, corporate actions on convertible securities. 
This video is just an introductory video and because it's an introductory video, we'll take a look at an overview of the entire series of what happens in corporate actions. So corporate actions could be of two types. The first one is voluntary corporate actions and the second is mandatory corporate actions. In India, we also have an option called as voluntary with choice. Sorry, I'm sorry, mandatory with choice. But in most international markets, Canadian markets, US markets, etc., it is clubbed into two categories, voluntary or mandatory corporate actions. Let's first take a look at a, what is a mandatory corporate action. Mandatory means it is compulsory. Okay. So a mandatory corporate action means the company announces it and the investor has no say in the outcome of the event. Okay, now look at the terms that are used over here. There are two specific terms that I want you to focus on. The first one is no choice. That means the company has announced the investor must take it. Okay, so it's mandatory for the investor to take it. Okay, it's not mandatory for the company to issue it. You know, I have done so many interviews when I asked what is mandatory corporate actions. So they say it is mandatory for the company to issue dividends. No, it is not. Mandatory corporate action means it is mandatory for the investor to take whatever is the announcement made by the corporate. The second term I want you to focus on is eligible shareholders. Now, who are eligible shareholders? Eligible shareholders are those shareholders whose names are appearing in the books of accounts as owners of the shareholders as on the record date. Okay. So the record date is fixed by the company. So whenever a company announces a corporate action, the most important aspect of the corporate action from every stakeholder is the date. Because there are multiple dates that are involved in corporate actions. So the record date is the date on which all the security owners whose names appear in the record date list will be eligible to get the corporate action benefit, will be eligible to get the entitlement. Okay, so that is the meaning of the term eligible. Eligible means that you are a stakeholder as on the date, as on the record date. Okay, so we will be taking a look at one example where a company makes an announcement, also announces the record date. Because the shareholder whose names appear as shareholders on the record date only are eligible to get the benefits. If the name does not appear as a shareholder, they will not be able to get the benefits of the corporate action. That is mandatory corporate action for you. What mandatory corporate action examples? Look at the list. Spin-offs, stock splits, reverse stock splits, liquidations, mergers and acquisitions, name symbol change, dividends. All of these are examples of mandatory corporate action. A spin-off is when a part of a company's business is spun off into a separate company altogether. And what the company normally does is it announces shares for the existing shareholders of the old company and they give them the benefit of some shares in the new company as well. Okay, or in the smaller company as well. So spin-offs take place quite frequently, especially when business divisions grow to quite a large size. A stock split is when the face value of the company's stock is reduced. And the stock split is very important to understand from the point of view that the valuation of the holding does not change after the split. A reverse stock split takes place when the face value of the company's stock is increased okay so like the, if you look at stock split the face value of the company stock is reduced in the case of reverse stock split the face value of the company stock increases so if you look at the global markets especially the european markets or the american markets they don't talk of face value or par value they say that the stock split is when the value of the stock is reduced okay and a, in a predetermined swap ratio and a reverse stock split is when the companies value price of the stock in, is increased okay so that's how they talk normally in terms of stock splits and reverse stock splits 
The fourth one is liquidation. When a company goes in for liquidation or bankruptcy has been filed, then the shareholders are paid at the very last after payment of senior debt holders, subordinated debt holders, etc. The fifth one is mergers and acquisitions. When companies merge or acquire other companies, then stock is issued in the new entity to the existing shareholders. Sometimes companies change their names, symbols are changed. What is a symbol? Symbol is the ticker on which the security is uh, are traded on the stock exchanges. And finally, dividends. Dividends are announced by the company. The shareholders have to take the dividend. Of course, there are some minor modifications in dividends. You can get a choice of whether you want cash dividend, script dividend, DRP, etc. We'll be taking a look at a specific example of dividend in the upcoming slides. A voluntary corporate action is one where it is entirely voluntary for the eligible shareholders to participate. So the shareholders get a right whether to participate or not participate in the outcome of the event. Of course, the dates matter because that's how we get to the term eligible shareholders. So we still have the record date, the pay date, X date, etc. But over here, remember that the choice is for the investor. So if you, if you are doing a fund administration of a fund and one of your investments has announced a corporate action in the term of rights issues, then you understand that the fund takes a decision whether to participate in the rights issue or not. It's not mandatory that the uh, fund has to participate in the uh, corporate action and therefore or in the rights issuance and therefore it's called as a voluntary corporate action. There is a lot of activity for fund administrators in voluntary corporate actions because they have to choose so many things. There's a lot of decision making involved, a lot of strategizing involved, a lot of options are given and then they have to decide what is going to be the call that they are taking for participating in the rights issue or not. Examples of voluntary corporate action, equity tenders, bond tenders, consent at the time of voting, rights offer, etc. We will be putting up a separate video entirely on voluntary corporate actions. So there are two types of corporate actions, mandatory corporate action, voluntary corporate action. They are of different types with reference to securities like equities, bonds, convertible securities and preference shares. And like every other corporate action, it must have the necessary important dates, which is the record date, the payment date and the X date. Let's take an example of dividends. Dividends, as you know, are entitlements which are given by the company to the shareholders. Now, as per the company's regulations, the company, com the company uh, accounts are finalized and approved by the board of directors. The board makes an announcement of the dividends. The dividend has to be a the dividend announcement with respect to the percentage or the dollar per share has to be approved by the shareholders. So if you look at specifically dividends, it is very important to remember like in the United States, European Union, etc. They announce dollar per share, unlike in Asian markets where they announce percentage of par value. But if you look at IFRS standards, GAAP standards, they insist that both have to be announced. That is percentage of par value as well as dollar per share or rupee per share okay so is this clear so the dividends are an example of mandatory corporate action so the company announces the dividends as a dollar per share and then the shareholders get a choice whether to participate in it through cash dividends uh, script dividends or dividend reinvestment now we'll take a look at the very important aspect of dividend dates okay first comes the announcement date who announces the uh, dividends the company board of directors announce the dividends okay once the announced dividends are announced all the share stocks that are traded on that company are called as cum dividends cum stands for including dividends so from the period of announcement date to X dividend date, the shareholders who hold the stocks of the company, the price at which it is quoted is called as come dividend stock. That means it includes the 
dividends. The third important date is the X dividend date. The X dividend date is the date on which the shareholder, even if they buy the stock, they will not get the dividends. Okay, so come dividend means it includes the dividends, X dividend means it excludes the dividends. Okay, so there is this period of which typically lasts for about 14 to 15 days or a fortnight between announcement date and X dividend date, wherein investors can buy the stock fully knowing that the dividend has been announced and the stock includes the, the stock price includes the dividend entitlement. Then comes the record date. Record date is the date on which if the shareholder is appearing as a shareholder on the books of records of the issuing company will be entitled to get the dividends. And the last one is the payment date. So these are actually the sequence of the dates. So the X dividend date and the record date depends upon the stock exchange on which the stock is trading in okay for example if the stock market is trading on a t plus 2 settlement basis then the x dividend date falls one day prior to the record date okay because the settlement cycle has to complete only then the shareholder becomes a part of the company's shareholding list on the record date so if the market follows a T plus 3, then it will be two working days before the record date. So the companies announce the record date, the stock exchanges announce the X dividend date, the company announces the dividend rate. Okay. For example, if the company stock is quoted in two markets, one market which follows a T plus 2 settlement cycle, and perhaps another international market which follows a T plus 1 settlement cycle, then the X dividend dates would be different for both of them because the X date is the date on which the security doesn't give the shareholder the entitlement. Over here, I've taken the specific example of dividends, but this is true, the X date, record date, payment date is true for all corporate actions, okay? Whether it is stock split, reverse stock split, mergers and acquisitions, spin-off, etc. For any kind of corporate action announcement, for any kind of corporate action announcement, the record date and the X, X rate would be announced by the company. Let's take a look at this specific example, which I've managed to extract from uh, because it's very difficult to get such kind of details if you're not a subscriber to Bloomberg. So let's take a look at the first part of this. OK, this is a screen uh, that you see. The first one is the company's name, which comes as IBM. The second is the security type is mentioned. It could be common stock. It could be preference shares, right? So it has very clear that when you are when you're scrolling down Bloomberg to find out the data, you are remembering the fact that your fund holds equity over there. The ticker is IBM, okay? And since the country of issue and country of domicile is the US, the ticker comes as IBM US. The price of the stock is $117.84. And then we come on to the ISIN. What do we mean by ISIN? ISIN is the International Securities Identification Number. Okay, ISIN. The ISIN is a alphanumeric code that is assigned to securities that are listed anywhere in the world and it is unique to that particular stocks so over here an ISIN for US 459200014 refers to common stock of IBM traded in the US all right so that's how we look at ISINs that way 
uh, how do I know it's in the US? Because it starts with US. If it's, if it's, if it's listed in India, it starts with IN. Okay. So ISIL is very important for settlements because the depository only recognizes the ISINs. It doesn't recognize anything else other than the ISINs for settlement purposes. Then we come to the SEDOL. SEDOL is a stock exchange daily official list, which is a seven character identification code assigned to securities that trade on the London Stock Exchange. So this is the security stock exchange daily official list for securities that are traded on the London Stock Exchange. Okay. So these are the broad ways that you read the ribbon over here. Now we look at the next aspect. The, the announcement is made on 31st July. The X date is announced as 8th of August. That means if you, the stock that is quoted on 8th of August will not get the dividends. So from 31st July to 7th of August, it is quoted as Come dividends, C-U-M dividends. That for an entire week it is quoted, including dividends. The record date is the date on which if you buy the stock, you, sorry, uh, the date on which your name should appear as a stockholder. Okay. So this follows the then New York stock market, which was that time trading at T uh, plus 3, but now it is T plus 2. So the date would be changing accordingly. Over here, the X date and record date, if you see, there is a two-day gap. That was because at that point of time, the New York Stock Exchange was trading at uh, T plus 3, but now it is trading at T plus 2. So the X date will be, uh, if it was in today's market, it would be record date minus 1. Then we come to the amount. Amount, as I told you, is announced on a dollar per share. Okay. The pay date is the same date as a record date because electronic clearing ensures that immediate payment can be affected. This is a quarterly dividend. The currency is in dollars. The amount is 0.4 per stock of IBM. Okay, so this kind of elaborates most of them. Then we come on to the option of whether the dividend is going to be received by script or by DRP. Script means equivalent amount of dividends will be given by way of shares. DRP means the dividend is reinvested back into the company that is called as a DRP. Over here in this case the investor has selected DRP as the option. So that's how you read out the dates, the announcements, ISINs, SEDALs, etc. for purposes of corporate action. If you like the content that we are sharing with you, please do like, share, Subscribe, comment on the videos that I'm posting. It's very important to have a lot of positive motivation for us so that we can keep uploading videos for you guys. Thank you so much and my very best wishes to all of you.